this is my first like official like zoom interview type well no not actually but for this podcast yeah okay because i'm trying to do more video instead mm-hmm. of just talking on this microphone during <laughs> you know on my laptop so yeah. okay so welcome this is true self and i am camilla b and this is jasmine hey <laughs> so i think about this topic because we always me and jasmine work together when at the ride i probably will blur this out but anyway <laughs> okay <laughs> and we always had really great conversations and the self awareness topic really after speaking to you about self awareness it really like kind of had my mind spiraling a lot because I realized that you have self awareness since you were like a child. Am I right? <laughs> I I mean I have. Yeah, you could say that. Probably a teenager. Yeah. The first question I'm going to ask you. So the topic is self awareness, the gift and the curse of self awareness. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And I want to ask you like what was the age you feel like you were self aware? And can you tell a story about that time? Hmm. Let's see. I was probably a teenager. I don't remember the age, but definitely I I think it I'm nervous now because you push for court. (laughs) (laughs) But but I definitely think it was when I was a teenager that I started to become self-aware of stuff um, about like certain actions that I had done. But I always think that it's a reflection that's around you. So I had a bunch of family members who were constantly asking me questions about like, how are you feeling? You know, why are you doing this? What are you doing? You know? Um, And so I started to think like, why do I do certain things? Why am I a certain way? Why do I feel this way in certain Mm -hmm. situations? Um, So let's see, to give you a specific situation, I, growing up with my cousin, um, she is a gorgeous woman and I always wanted to be just like her, (laughs) excuse Mm me, um, always wanted to be just like her. And she, um, she's the one that laughs and loves to have fun, loves to have a good time. And I really started to notice that I wasn't that way. And I wanted to try to figure out why, like, why am I always so serious? Um, And I think that comes from like how I grew up and seeing Mm. certain situations where fun doesn't always look fun. And um, I think that's why I became like a very serious person at a very young age too. Um, so I think that's in the teens is when I started to like really learn about self-awareness and feeling that I could be very self-aware, um, about me. So, yeah. Wow. That was kind of deep. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I did not see that story coming. Um, that's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing that story. How far apart are you and your cousin? Oh, she is probably 15 years older than me, 10 10 to 15 years older than me. That's normal. Yeah. 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 That is very normal. Well, my self-awareness began much later. Okay. I think I had to have a relationship with Christ for self-awareness to really hit me. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when you're more, when you're around people more, in a church (laughs) you're figuring out this relationship with christ and you're getting to know people in those four walls also Mm -hmm. and me trying to figure out like who's this new person i want to be because you know once you become christ follower you have all these rules that's embedded in you Mm -hmm. and i started to realize i started to question a lot of different things and that's when kind of like an awakening began 
mm-hmm. I would say like 28. Yeah. So it was more of like, I think I would notice sermons and then I would notice that everybody's stories would be different. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody interpreted very differently of what they read. And right. I think I asked my cousin, um, shout out to her, that I was like, why do I feel like people are just like, I think I asked some question along the lines of like, why I feel like everybody is telling something, everybody is interpreting the Bible differently. And it doesn't seem like it's, it doesn't seem like it all sounds the same. You know what I mean? Like, yes. yep. <laughs> Sure do. That was the beginning of me questioning things. Yeah. <laughs> that I kind of had to be more aware of like how I was acting, mm-hmm. my um how I wanted to kind of straighten my behavior and try to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And I would catch myself doing that. And I realized that that I think by the time like a year into Christianity, I'm like, I'm not a perfect person. Right. There's no way for me to be perfect. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm happy I caught that. Um, so yeah, that's my little story. Yeah, that's awesome. So I was looking up self-awareness and there are four kinds of self-awareness. I did not know that. I didn't either. <laughs> okay, so um, it says awareness of others. Okay. And say and think about you. Um, awareness of the thoughts and feelings you have about yourself, awareness of who you um, who you really are, awareness of who you want to become. Mm. Okay, so what I feel like I am more of the awareness of thoughts and feelings that I have about myself, and mm-hmm. I think that I catch myself when I kind of get angry about things. I used to be like, okay, so what am I really angry about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is something I catch myself constantly. All right, calm down. Let's dissect this. Why do you feel this way? <laughs> right, right. For sure. <laughs> and it helps me when I kind of realize that it ties into I'm angry about something else. Mm-hmm. Does that happen to you? It does. Um, and... I catch myself sometimes. Other people that I know catch me sometimes too. So I'm grateful for that, that they're aware of other people. Um, but yeah, that that definitely happens to me where where I have to kind of stop myself and figure out like, okay, you're not this, your emotion towards this, does it has nothing to do with that. So you're yeah, right. Like, let's figure out what's really going on here, like underneath right. the surface. Um, and I, I think like when I was younger, um, I definitely had, you know, some inklings about myself and why I felt in certain ways, but I also think it was more reflection on other people. And the only reason I say that is because I had the ability to like really see people, but I also feel like my ability to see people was because I really wanted to be seen. So I would like, you know, I could have a conversation with somebody and give them advice or, you know, things to do. But yet if it was for me, hmm, I couldn't tell myself to do those certain things if I was in that same situation, Um, which I find very interesting. I don't know why it's that way, but the world is that way. Or even if it was like my mom telling me I might not listen to my mom, but I listen to my cousin. Um, (laughs) You know, like, it's it's so crazy. But um, Mm -hmm. I think, I think in the beginning for me, it was definitely like, you know, figuring out like why I did certain things, but then also I could see a lot in other people. And Mm -hmm. I think that's what started to drive me to be an actor because I could tell people's stories because I felt like a lot of people, they felt like their story didn't deserve to be told. And Mm -hmm. with, with acting, you can connect and relate to somebody so that they didn't feel alone in the world. And I felt like a lot of the times that I was alone, like nobody thought like me, nobody looked like me, nobody loved as hard as I did. Nobody, you know, Mm. all of those things. So um, being able to try on people's shoes 
and see that, oh, wait, I can relate to this person because, you know, maybe this one little thing connects both of us. Um, yeah. And if I could share that with the world, I think that's a beautiful thing. So, yeah. Oh, wow. I love that. Okay. So the gift side of the gift side of self awareness, I would say, is um, being able to, like you said, pick up on others. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, I don't know, I know I like to put myself in situations to make the other person understand something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can do that too, <laughs> but that's part of it. Like give a perspective to other people. I think that helps um, in a lot of situations. <clears throat> the one thing I recently found out, like pay attention to when people are arguing, you <laughs> mind blowing okay it's like they're say we say the same things over and over again in an argument yes. it's like a circle and i just and it's like that's why now being 36 right i just want to mm -hmm. be more direct mm. about certain things mm -hmm. with communication because i don't like to argue i refuse to argue same. it's so uncomfortable to argue yeah. So if I know that, and a lot of times I do put blame onto myself mm -hmm. when the argument is happening, because I'm like, maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe I'm explaining this wrong. Maybe I wasn't clear. And right. it's like a, a constant thing that plays over in your head. Right. The curse of it all is um, having things play back in your head over and over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and sure. it's it's very crippling i tell my friend every time like every time i feel like i didn't say something or i should have said something different it plays over and over and ahead. does that happen to you all the time it's horrible all the time <laughs> all all the time I mean, oh my god yeah there are so many situations where i'm like oh i should have said this or i should have i should have did this um that that's definitely nothing new <laughs> i mean it's hard to explain because i felt like i just like had a flashback of like 10 different things that i should have did this or i should have did that you know um and like at this point it's like what can you do you know those moments have passed um so but you continue to think about them because you're like dang i should have done this maybe the outcome would have been different there's a lot of things I feel like, especially when it comes to relationships, I feel like I always want a different outcome because I should have did things differently, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. there is this thing that um, it's so hard when you're dealing with so many different personalities. Everybody communicates differently and um, everybody wants to be heard. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's something that I realized with self-awareness everybody wants to be heard and the listening part is more crucial than anything mm -hmm. but and I don't like human beings are so strange to me <laughs> in the fact of like like we all want to solve something right but mm -hmm. All we gotta do is talk less. Do you feel that way sometimes? <laughs> yes, I definitely do. Um, I definitely feel that way because even with, like you said, with trying to solve the problem, sometimes mm -hmm. like I can create something bigger because I'm now trying to, you know, get in there and solve it. Um, but um for sure. I think to go back to a little bit earlier when you were talking about the gift versus the curse, I think um, when it is that gift to be able to see from different perspectives, and I think that's the beauty of acting, is that I'm able to see it from, you know, the mother's point of view, the father's point of view, the son's point of view, you know, the daughter's point of view, and be able to, like, navigate from and, you know, find different avenues and stories. And so um, I think that also plays a part in having that as a gift. And what I've also learned is the curse of that is, like I said, you know, trying to solve something that maybe the person doesn't even want to solve. They just want to complain about. And so also oh, knowing that, like, <laughs> that's such a good point. Like, 
you know, like there, there are times, like you said, like sometimes they just want us to listen versus actually trying to solve their issue. And um, oh my God. having a conversation with my mother, there were times, there have been times where, you know, I am a problem solver, especially being in a managerial position you tend to have that quick thinking of how can I solve this? You know, there's an issue, how can I solve this? So sometimes mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to get out of that on your daily, you know, basis go home. And so you still thinking, how can I solve that? So get on the phone with my mom, she's having issues. Instantly I'm thinking, how can I solve that? And my mom is like, I'm just trying to tell you what I'm going through, you know, like, and so um, yeah. I definitely think that can be the curse, especially coming from a younger person. You know, sometimes they don't always want advice from a younger person. Um, they, you know, they just want you to hear, hear them out and um, oh yeah, agree with them and invalidate them. And I feel like in my older age, I have, I'm at this point now where in my I older age, my older age, I'm 33, but I'm not that old, but still. I feel wow. old. Okay. So okay. In, in this age, I feel like, or in this period of my life, I feel like I'm at a stage where I don't want to validate like complaining. I don't want to validate, you know, like I'm just I I'm being not in that stage. Mm -hmm. I, this is where I'm at right now. And so when I am having or hearing complaints from, you know, friends or family or whoever it is, I get to the point where I'm like, okay, this is how you can solve it. And if they don't want that, then I'm like, okay, we can't talk about this anymore because I can't validate your feelings on why you feel this way. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how else to explain it, but I feel like I'm at, at that stage. Um, and I also think there's people in general they have expectations and intentions on what they say, how they say it, when they say it, right? Um, and what they're expecting back from that person. But to your mm -hmm. point, if we don't communicate correctly, then we don't get the result that we're looking for. And so communication is really key. And I think I think it's harder when relationships are long. So like the long-term relationships between mother and daughter, dad and son, mm. you know, daughter and, and father. Like I think those, because we have let certain things go unsaid for so long, now you feel like, oh crap, how do I address it? And if I address it, this person mm. is going to feel that way. Mm -hmm. So that's your own expectations versus what they're actually their actual expectation would be or how they would actually react. And um, so it's very, it's very interesting that communication, it is, it is, I mean, that is the bare, the bare bones of being aware and being able to listen and communicate back to them like, hey, I hear this is how you're feeling. This is where you are. Okay, how can we move forward from there? Like, mm -hmm. how can we fix um, now I see yeah. all of that and I'm still working on those things, but I'm just saying like, of I'm course. aware. Of disclaimer, disclaimer. I say disclaimer all the time on this is like, I'm not an expert. I'm just literally going through this right now. That's my disclaimer Fact. on this podcast because Fact. I am not perfect at self-awareness yet, but I just know that I am self-aware at the same time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. I think that's all I really had to say to those points because you were talking about the gift and the curse. So this is part that I I constantly go through is the conflict between the head and the heart. Mm. It's like <laughs> I see your face. Okay. <laughs> oh, why do the conflict there? between <laughs> the head and the heart? Now it's a uh, yep. it's a tricky thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Is like mm -hmm. we know better, right? <laughs> we know better, <laughs> but we still do it anyway. That's something I struggle with. Um, I'm getting better at it um, as far as when it comes to dating because I can pick up on BS and just be more aware of it. Even though we are aware about a lot of the BS that comes with dating, 
we still like accept it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why do you and, think you accept it? <clears throat> oh, my last episode, I did abandonment issues. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was a real hard one to record. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it was basically just laying it all out there about why I accept a lot of things from people mm-hmm. why i let a lot of stuff slide is because mm-hmm. i have this fear of like oh losing them yeah it happens in family relationships and it happens in like friendship relationships yeah so having to realize that i put up with so much shit because i'm afraid of losing that person is not healthy right when you should be confronting the stuff that hurts you and you let shit slide because you're afraid the person's going to leave you. Yeah. So once I had that awareness of that, I pick up on shit much quicker now. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I met this dude in a lift. I did a lift share on Halloween night. I was gambling with my life. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll put this other clip. This is funny. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, you like? okay. we exchange numbers. Mm-hmm. We exchange numbers. And just a text saying, I realized this nigga about to BS me. <laughs> mm. Caught it mm. from jump. I caught it. And we had this real adult conversation about how what he's looking for and what I'm looking for and we ended it right there just through texting after two days of meeting yeah so it really it's like that's why I love this podcast because it allows me to speak out loud and Mm -hmm. attack the issues now that I said it out loud I can hear it for myself now Mm -hmm. and attack it right after that you know what I mean so we don't text no more. But he did text me the other night talking about what you doing. I'm like looking at my phone like, excuse me? I, I agree. I have been a person that um, when it comes to certain relationships that, like I said, I'll know exactly what to do. And if it was somebody else in the situation, I'd be able to tell you exactly what to do in order to try to end it or move past it or heal from it, right? Like, I'll know those steps. Mm-hmm. Super aware of that. Um, but when it comes to me and I think it's a level also of your worth and your feelings about your worth, because Mm. if you feel that you only deserve this, then you'll never get to this. Right. And so when I think about personal relationships with men that I have had, for me, it has definitely been a worth conversation because I understand that I don't feel worthy enough to be with mm-hmm. a man who would treat me the way that I deserve to be treated. So instead, mm-hmm. I accept the things like, oh, uh, we would be mid-conversation and then the conversation ends and that's it. Or, you know, they won't text me for three months and then out of the blue they text and, you know, okay, great. I'm still okay with that. So there's still a level of unworthiness that I feel um, that a man won't do more than that. Like that is the level that I, that's the only level that I'll ever be able to, you know, get. So I'm going to accept this because this is all I'll ever be able to get. A huge battle with myself, with trying to get to the other side of that because my family tells me I'm worthy. My friends tell me I'm worthy. You know, my dad, my mom, everybody can see the worth in me and the potential I have to be like in a really great relationship. But for some reason, I still can't see it for myself. This is kind of making me cry right now. (laughs) Oh, no, (laughs) don't cry. Um, But I think it's all around like identity and believing in myself and who I am and where I am and believing that I really deserve it. But I also think the environment that I grew up in, unfortunately, 
society did a really freaking great job of making me feel small and putting me in a hole, you know, and making Ugh. me feel as if mm-hmm. I deserve what I truly deserve. And so I can talk about it, yes. But if I was to really start to like dissect and go deeper, then yes, I would be sitting here crying too. Cause I feel like, dang, I will never eventually get to that. Like one true love that I feel like I deserve on the surface. Um, but still going deep down in my head thinks, mm, but that's not for you. Like that wasn't made for a dark skinned black woman. You know what I mean? Mm. And if it was for a dark skinned black woman, it's meant to end in ruins and not, you know, in prosperity. So like for me, Mm. it's just like, "Mm, that's, that's, it'll never be like, that will never be my life or my story. Um, And I also think as a young child growing up, when you see certain relationships, um, First, there's the TV, right? And then there's your family, right? So, like, you have this huge, this huge, like, scale between this is what non reality is because it's TV and they're forcing you to believe, you know, what they have on TV. But then there's the reality and the people that Mm. you love, the people that you see every single day and how they sculpt and are living around their relationships between men and women. And so on a daily basis, when you see that constantly, you start to believe those things, right? And everybody Mm -hmm. will tell you that you should believe this, tell you you should believe that about yourself. But we always do as our parents do, not as they say, right? So Mm -hmm. when you see certain things, you start to do and believe those certain things, um, not in regards to relationships. And so for me, like seeing those type of relationships within my family or only seeing certain skin types have a certain type of relationship for so long that was built out for me. So those were the cards that I was dealt. And so I feel like now I'm in this place where I am really, forcing myself to figure out like that true identity to figure out like how can I change you know that core belief that I have that you know programming that I have that I grew up with so that I can eventually get the dream that I actually want and deserve talk about conflict head in the heart (laughs) wow (laughs) yeah thank you for sharing that because that is real. That is very, yeah. very real. Um, disclaimer, you are very beautiful and you are going to get the man you deserve. Okay? Just wanted to tell that. On air, recorded. Okay? <laughs> ah, yes, I'll take it. Thank you. You are too. We will both have th- like thriving relationships and they'll be very, very beautiful. And I can't wait yeah. for the future. Me so, too. you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's talk about self awareness self awareness because you just impact so much that you know and you hear it and you you know at the core, but you still like don't believe it at the same time. Like it's wow. <laughs> and that's the gift and the curse, oh right? Like we know exactly what it, we're supposed to do. You know exactly the right books that you're supposed to read, the right songs you're supposed to listen to, the right people you're supposed to be around. You understand all of that, but yet you still walk with the wrong crowd. You still lay with the wrong man. You still, you know, are not reading the books. You still are in your bed crying because you're mad about whatever, watching some unhealthy TV show. And I think what I've, learn from my therapist is that she's like she was like you have to do the work in order to get there because like this you know where you want to be and you know where you are but mm. you have to do the work to get there right like and you're super aware of how to get there but if you don't do the work you can never get there right so like See? if i don't get up and read mm. the book if i don't work out i won't have a better living body if i don't 
you know, eat right, I will continue to have this type of. So like, she's like, you have to do the work to get there. Yes, being aware is one of the steps, probably the first step, because now you can admit, okay, I'm not doing the things that I'm doing, but now it's taking that action and it's moving forward step by step having those difficult conversations with your parents so that you can have a better relationship in the long term instead of oh every time i see my mom i can barely look at her because you know i'm not saying this or every time i see you know my brother blah 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 like all of whatever those things are b- between grandfather and and you know grandson like whatever those conversations are sometimes you have to have those hard conversations so that you yeah. personally can move past it. And although it might hurt them, there's a way to be able to have that conversation respectfully, you know, um, so that you can mm-hmm. move forward. But you have to do the work in order to move forward. Because otherwise, we're going to literally be stuck in this time loop, right? Where it's the should have, oh, I could have, mm-hmm. I could have done this, I should have done that, we should have said that. But instead, we're going to stay in this time frame and never be able to move forward. And I think that's where a lot of people tend to start to die because we don't move forward and we don't allow ourselves to try to grow and move past where we are. We are stuck, literally, physically, mentally stuck in those places until we're Mm. able to communicate and fight our way out of that space. So it is definitely a gift and a curse to be aware. But the gift of it is being able to take the action afterwards. The curse of it is knowing and not never doing anything. Girl, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the tormenting in the head, knowing and yeah. not doing anything about it. Yeah. I feel sure. like there are times that I I could say that I've seen it and didn't do anything about it but there is like that i believe there is a a muscle you have to exercise to get yourself out of those situations each mm-hmm. time it happens to you mm-hmm. and you have to constantly it's a constant struggle like i tell mm-hmm. i say this over and over again i'm naturally lazy the fact that i get up and do things for myself was a struggle in the beginning yeah. yeah, because I know that I had to do it, but I would just lay there and not do it. You know what I mean? Right. It took one, two, three, four, five times, and then I'm like, I, I must keep doing this. Let me keep doing this. That's literally building a habit. Very so. much so. No, I agree. I definitely think it's building a habit, but I also think you have to mentally be there, and. You have to mentally be there. So like my, one of my brothers passed away a year ago. Right. And for so long, I was just trying to get to the next hour. Like all I could think about was the next hour. Right. It was like, okay, how can I get, okay, we got there. Okay. How can I get to this? Okay, great. I, I'm still breathing. Okay. I got to this moment. Okay. You know, you wake up the next morning, you're like, okay, I'm here now. What? Right. Like I was in such shock for such a long time. And I just now feel like I can move forward from that. So Mm -hmm. everything that I wanted to do mentally, physically, you know, spiritually, financially, all of those things, all of that halted because of the shock factor and because I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Like I, my mind just mentally wasn't there for me to start to take action. So I just now feel like, okay, I can step forward now. Cause I feel like I'm actually breathing Before I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. Like I was always trying to catch up to it, but now I feel like, okay, no, I'm grounded. Now I can feel the ground. I'm alive. Let's continue and move forward. So I think there's also that part, like, you're right as far as being like oh i'm lazy you know i don't want to do anything but if you're mentally not there you're not going to get you're not going to get up so sometimes there's also that portion and you have to allow yourself to get there mentally so that you know you can eventually start to take that action i think there's i don't know what i don't know where i heard this from but 
there was a guy who wanted to get um wanted to start working out and get exercise and he started going to the gym every day but he would walk in the door and walk right back out that's it he'd get up get dressed to go to the gym walk in walk right back out but he was getting into that habit it was the mental space of getting up going oh, wow. out and in walking out because the hardest thing is to show up right to show especially for yourself it's easy for me to say okay oh, I'm doing this i'm gonna show up for them oh my mom is doing this i'm gonna show up for them oh but showing up for yourself wow. that's one of the hardest things you got to do so he mm -hmm. was building that habit of showing up so get dressed go wow. to the gym walk out. Get that's dressed, so good Right. And then eventually he started working out and he created that habit of, all right, this is what I do every single morning now. And I think for some people, we have to create those little habits so that we can eventually change and make those actions so that eventually we're out of whatever we're going through, you know, whatever steps we need to take to get to the next point. We have to create those steps yeah. and we have to it and you have to sometimes you have to have somebody there to kick you in the butt to say all right let's go you know this and that always helps but i never had that but <laughs> <laughs> i think it helps but to a, to a certain extent right like you have you have to be aware of where the person is too because you know there are going to be some days where the person just you're going to be like oh no they seriously can't do it today so you kicking and dragging them is not going to yeah. do anything right so in the beginning i felt like i had like in the beginning i kind of had it but not really but then mm -hmm. as the years went on i started to have like those accountability people around you yes 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 and it helps it helps you know that you can get to the next step um <laughs> excuse me it definitely helps so i think with um awareness like we have to have other people in our circle who are aware of what's happening in our lives so that they can mm -hmm. gently, you know, hold you accountable for certain things. Um, because, it, you know, if, if it's a harsh thing that they're trying to get you to do, you might not do it. And then you might sever your ties with that relationship, right? Um, so, yeah, you have to have those accountability partners who are gently going to be able to say, yeah, I'll meet you here. Or yes, let's do this. Or yes, I'll make sure I call you at five o'clock so that, you know, we can write whatever that case may be. Um, I feel like sometimes we try to, um, well, I'm famous for making excuse excuses for people. That's what I'm famous for. And only because the self-awareness that I try to give people a chance. Do you do that? So, yes, the guy, um, so prime example, texting, right? Um, I'm actually more of a phone talk, phone call type of person rather than the text person. Uh, I'd rather just have a conversation with somebody. It, to me, it just makes it easier. Um, and that might just be because I'm an older generation versus these younger kids. Um, but just as far as texting, like, in the middle of a conversation, yes. Like mid conversation, asking questions, we're going back and forth, ask a question, and then silence. And then silence oh, for like I a week. And so you're much. just like, you're like, oh, well, maybe they were just working. Well, maybe something came up. Well, maybe this and that. Okay, that's fine, but can I you still get back to the work? You know, and I'm I not saying that yep. I'm not at fault for doing it. Like, I've totally done it. And I apologize for all the ones that I've done it to. I know I've done that, right? I'm just not great at texting. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell people up front when, you know, I meet people or they're trying to text. I'm like, look, I'm not the best at texting. I'll get back to you, but I'm not the best at texting. I try to let them know that so that they at least understand, okay, this is this person, right? And so, yeah. but there's an expectation around texting, right? Like, as soon as I send the text, I expect an answer right away. I don't know how everybody else feels, but that's how I feel. <laughs> and so when I send a text oh message to somebody, I literally expect an answer in two seconds. I think everybody is that way. I think everybody. But then you leave people hanging. 
<laughs> so I'm like in that regard, I'm such a hypocrite. I hate it. <laughs> but that is that is who I am, technically who I am. Okay. I already told you I'm not the greatest with texting. But um it's crazy that I think in that regard, but I do. And I I don't know, maybe it's just cause I don't know, it's a text message, it's quick, like try to, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I think yeah. for sure, like I have definitely given excuses to people, not just that. I give excuses for customers, people I don't even know. Like they will come up to the box office and buy a ticket. And instead of saying hi, looking me in my eye, they just start two tickets for this day. And you're like, okay, I'm a, no, that's because they had a bad day. Yeah. So somebody may have tripped them on their way. Like I'm coming up with some sort of right? excuse as to why me oh my God. before we start. I just think that. Right? Like, so giving excuses for people is definitely something that I am a big, like, I'm oh, so it's just something that we do then. I thought it was just a me thing. Yeah. So I feel good. <laughs> I, I don't know who else. I don't know who else does it, but I know that I do it for sure. And it is, I don't think it's healthy. And the only reason I say I don't think it's healthy is because again, we're allowing these things to then happen instead of communicating like how we feel. So yeah. prime example of that transaction between the person at the box office, it could easily be met with. Hi, how are you doing? Right. But instead I go, oh, okay, two tickets. All right, great. Right. Instead of actually having that exchange and just say, hi, how are you doing? And wait for a response. Oh my God. Because then they, kind of, uh, they have no choice but to say, hey, oh yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm sorry. You know, and then we can move on with that exchange. So, but I think that's sure, crazy you said I, that. Yeah. No, go ahead. Um, it's saying? crazy you said that because there's something I was like, I mentally do when I'm at like a cash register or something, I ask them how they doing and I tell them like, mm -hmm. have a good rest of your day. It's something I mentally had to start doing because like that little interaction can help them. You know what I mean? It can like brighten it up for oh, the yes. next customer behind you, you know, like that is something yeah. I had to be aware of, like. It is something I had to start doing more. Yeah, and it's funny because um, I I always do it, and I think that's a natural thing from how I grew up. I was always taught mm. to you say hi, you say hello, how are you doing? No matter what, like that's where you start is hi, hello, how are you doing? You know, my name is Chad, like all of those little things, right? And so mm -hmm. that has never left me, even though I live in New York and they say New York is whatever they say about New York. Um, but New Yorkers are the friendliest people in the world. So at least that's what I believe. Um, I think New Yorkers are very <laughs> direct. I think there's a difference. I guess. So, I think New Yorkers, well, I think New Yorkers are just very direct. I think that's the, there's the difference between, you know, being rude and being direct. Like they, they don't want to do, hi, how are you? How are you doing? They just want you to get to the point. And that's what I think is different. Yeah. I, this girl on TikTok, she talked about that, like being yeah. kind and nice is two different things. Like New Yorkers are kind, they're not nice. Right. Because right. kind is very like. You know, like I get yeah, that. When she I said that, I was like, oh my God, I felt seen. Like, oh my goodness. Right. And living here for so many years, that it makes sense because if you're walking in the street and somebody's asking me a question, like when they say the hi, how you doing? I'm usually like, okay, what do you need? You know what I mean? I'm like, get to the point here. So no, she said that she was like, if I see you with a stroller, I'll help you down the stairs. Okay, bye. And then walk away. Yeah. <laughs> see? See? So yeah, like it's just like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is like get to the point. Like, what do you need? I'll help you, but like. You know, we're always, New Yorkers are always busy because we always got somewhere we got to go, right? So we're just trying to get somewhere. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. I think for sure, like, there was an instance where, I don't know, I always, I always say that. And sometimes I'm met with the, oh, hi, how are you doing back? Or I'm met with, 
what can I get? You know, like they're just ready to move on. And I just let it go and just move on, you know, to whatever else I need. But it is, it's definitely, I think, a kind thing to do to people who work in customer service only because you don't know what they've dealt with beforehand. And having somebody to smile and say hi and actually look them in the eye and say, how are you doing? I think that is a nice thing. Eye contact but, is a huge thing. I'm like yeah. practicing eye contact daily. It's terrible. It's, it's so hard. <laughs> Why do you think it's so hard? Um, Because like the city, we don't like give a lot of people eye contact. I don't know if it's just the city or it's just how I grew up. Yeah. But so I'm like doing it little by little. Like <laughs> this is funny because I haven't talked about this out loud. So like a delivery guy comes, I give him eye contact. Like I'm just little baby steps for me. Baby yes. steps. <laughs> of course. That's what you so that's what I've been like doing. That is funny. So I have a separate story. That's very funny for mm -hmm. that. So being from down south, you smile and wave at everybody. Okay? Everybody. Mm. So, like, you could be getting in your car, you see somebody, you won't know them, you just wave. They could be driving down the street, you can wave. You, like, walking on the street, you waving, and you're, hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? You know, you walk into a store, you see somebody, hi, how you doing? You make eye contact, you say hi. So when I first moved here to New York, that was just a natural thing to me, but there were so many people, it was completely different, right? Like down South, you might have one person on the street, you know, here you got <laughs> 150,000 people on the street, right? Complete difference. So yes. I remember when I first moved here and I would walk on the street and I would smile and wave to people on the street. I'd be like, hey, how you doing? And it was like, I was the crazy person. <laughs> It was like I was a crazy person because I'm the one that's smiling and saying hi to them on the street when everybody else is like, what is going on? You know, they're just going about their natural way. But it took me so long to break that habit because it was so ingrained. When I had been doing it for 21 years. So it was so ingrained mm. in me that it took me a very long time to break that habit of looking at somebody and saying, hi, how you doing? And making eye contact on the street, walking to the train. So if you can imagine that a person <laughs> smiling and waving <laughs> on the street. It happened right? to me before. And I was just like, <laughs> hi. <laughs> exactly. That moment right there. And that was the moment I was giving to people. And people were like, what the heck is going on? This woman is crazy. Um, but yeah, that was just a, a crazy story from when I first moved here. But yeah. Okay, so at the end of every episode, we ask the guests or I come up with a question that you would um, ask people to ask themselves. So the premise is like, ask yourself questions to get to a, a healthy part of you. So do you have a question you can tell people to ask themselves when it comes to self-awareness? Um, yeah, I would just say stop and ask yourself what your expectation is from this. Like, what is your outcome? Whoa. <laughs> that hit different just now. <laughs> oh, my God. Say that one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> yeah. What is your expectation? Like, what's your outcome? Whatever it is, like, what is your expectation? That if it's something you're thinking about doing, thinking about saying, what's your expectation? What's the outcome from that situation? What do you want to happen? What is your intention behind it? Like, what's your expectation? Mm -hmm. And if you can stop and sort of think about that, it either might implore you to stop because you're like, oh, that actually might seem petty or, you know, this small expectation is not something that I actually need or want. Or it's, no, this is something that's for a healing in me. Like, I need the answer for this or I need this in order to move forward. So then you can go from there and go, okay. I want to talk about this. Maybe it's before a big argument, whatever, because I'm, I'm like you, I'm not an arguer. So um, maybe, you know, instead of trying to argue with the person, 
all right, what's your expectation from this argument? What is your expectation from this? What do you want to happen at the end of this conversation? What is your expectation? What's your outcome? Mm, mm, mm. That was beautiful, beautiful ending. Um, thank you for joining me on this talk. It was so good. Yeah, I'm so happy we did this because um, I haven't posted an episode since like early October. So this is good for me. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, but thank you so much for jumping in and being very authentic and being yourself. Thank you. I appreciate your time. I really, really do. And hopefully we can do it again on another topic. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Don't tempt me because you know I come up with other things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe it.